created the vegetative buds of Tictaria lazarsiflori. The reason why ferns are important is because they rely on water for fertilization and for this reason they are a potential indicator species of climate change such as drought. Another method of reproduction is by vegetative budding and on what happens is that the plants develop these buds on, either on the leaves, the stems, or the roots. However, the species that I'm studying, Tictaria lazarsiflori, they develop the buds on the leaf. And these leaves um, can develop to become an entirely new individual and they retain the same genetic information from the parent. The mystery is that we don't really know when vegetative budding evolved or the reason for, for its evolution. Um, we don't know what environmental conditions are suitable and how these buds establish themselves to become an individual plant. And the purpose of the study is to determine the environmental conditions and how these plants establish themselves. In 2004, an REA student suggested that spore reproduction is energetically more expensive than vegetative budding. And because sunlight and water are very crucial parts of the, of the production of energy in plants, I hypothesized that spores would be found in areas great with, under great light exposures and closer to the creek, while buds would be found in, area, in shady areas further away from the creek. I found six different locations along the Seward Creek, and at each location I set up two parallel transects at different distances from the river. So in total I sampled 894 leaves. I labeled them based on the fact based if they were sterile, if they were produced by spores, if they were produced by buds, or they were produced by both spores and buds. I also recorded the damage, the position of the leaf, the distance from the creek, the light measurements, and I took temperature and humidity readings using eye buttons. I found that 68.8% of all my of the leaves that I sampled all invested energy in reproduction. And of, of those that reproduced, 53.5% of them reproduced by vegetative budding. I found a, a relationship between reproduction by spores and light intensity. As light, with greater light intensity, there was more spores that were found on leaves. However, um, with more light intensity, there was less leaves that, that produced by vegetative budding. For distance of river, I found a relationship between vegetative budding and the distance from the creek. There were more buds there were more buds present as you moved away from the creek. Dr. Robert Moran said that buds develop rapidly as the leaf begins to die, and as it dies, the leaf reclines to the soil, and that's when the plants can then take root. With this said, if that I should expect to see more buds on damaged leaves and leaves that are reclined than on healthy, upright leaves. I saw a greater probability of finding vegetative buds on leaves that are, that are reclined. I want to acknowledge all my funding, LSM, NSF, University of Florida, my school, Sweet New Pulse, my great mentor, Deidre McLean, um, all my advisors from school, I want to thank, which I didn't put his name there, Bernald and Danilo, with, who helped me with all the equipment, Federico, who helped me with the statistics, Nelly R. You sent students, my mom. <laughs> And I want to personally thank all of my RAU family. Uh, you guys entertained me this entire summer. The analysis, it took a while. I've never, I never did any statistical um, analysis, but I just sat there in front of a computer. I played around. It was, it was actually quite fun. I definitely think we sh this program should continue for years and years and years. I definitely will publish my study. I think, I feel great. I think. I, I had an amazing time here and I loved my project and I really, I feel like I accomplished so much and I feel like I really made a difference in the, in the history of her.